Hello again. This is only going to be a fairly short video and it's basically just to introduce you to uh, sort of an underrated and little used feature in Stellarium, the uh, planetarium software. And what it'll help you to do this is uh, we've all been in a certain situation where we're sort of looking for an object and you've got Stellarium open on your laptop uh, or you might even have sort of printed something off from Stellarium and you've got this picture and you're looking through your scope for a particular object and you sort of look in your scope and then you look at your piece of paper and is that that star and if I twist my head sideways a little bit is that the little triangle of stars there that I can see in my eyepiece just off to the left and, and what have you you know we've all been there um, so this is going to help you with that and what it is it's the ocular plugin for Stellarium so what we're going to do is flick over to Stellarium and give you an introduction and show you the, the plugin actually in use right as you can see we've now got Stellarium open and I have a, a slightly shoddy uh, custom landscape into my Stellarium that shows my back garden uh, obviously it's daylight at the moment so we just need to advance time a little bit just to make it dark so we're just going to do that like so and also we'll just point a little bit more skywards like that now then the first thing that we need to do is to move over to the menu in Stellarium and click on the spanner icon next from this menu that opens up move along to plugins and click on plugins next click on the oculus tab like so and what we need to do first is tick load at startup once you've done that click on configure and you'll get a new screen now the first thing that you want to do here um, that I definitely prefer to have um, you know I mean personal preference but it's, it's recommended is to click on screen control panel now this is an addition to the latest version of Stellarium so if you don't have this on screen control panel option it means that you need to update your Stellarium so we click on that and that now gives us a little control panel up here and the top right in Stellarium now the next thing to just take note of here is enable if only an object is selected which means that you can only use the oculus if you have selected an object uh, it's just handy to keep it ticked now the other option is scale image circle what I would do is try it with and try it without it's just a matter of the scaling when you actually come to use um, the, the, the overlays and you know how much it, it zooms in and zooms out the sort of the background and, and the surroundings um, we've got the key mappings which are control and O and alt and O once we've got that sorted out the next thing we do is go to eyepieces and all you do is simply add whatever eyepieces you want to if you click on add it will just add one called my ocular um, you can then give it a name here of whatever sort of eyepiece it is um, and the other details you need to put in are the field of view and the focal length and the field stop for that particular eyepiece now it's not a big issue that it might worry you a little bit but if you go to either the manufacturer's website or nine times out of ten the retailer's website where you bought your eyepiece from or any retailer actually that's, that sells that particular eyepiece uh, and you have a look at the details most of the time those details are actually given for you um, you know we've got such as Nagler 8mm there which if you've got one of those if you have taken a second mortgage out on your house and sold your wife and kids and or sold them out to slavery or something you, you know you might have a collection of those um, these I have just guessed at and put in uh, just for the illustration of this video you would have to sort of again go to the the website and, and put in those details now we're going to skip over sensors for just a second and move to telescopes next and all you do here again is add and it will add one called my telescope again give it a name um, same thing with deleting them if you you know if you do something wrong you can just delete one um, highlight and delete and it'll remove that one now what you do is you put in your telescope and this is an easy part really you simply put in your focal length and diameter of your telescope well this one is my skywatcher ed80 which has a focal length of 600 and a diameter is 80 80 millimeters again you can go to the manufacturers websites or retailers websites and, and look up those details the other one i've got here is my 200p reflector 
Um, so again, it's named 200p, it's focal length of 1000, and the diameter is 200. Now you can also put in here horizontal and vertical flips, which are different for, for different telescopes and even different configurations. It depends on whether you're using a, a correcting diagonal or whether you're on a reflector or a Newtonian. And you know, it's just something that you'll, you'll either look up or just even compare views, you know, just sort of compare a view to the ocular view in Stellarium and if it's upside down then just flip it if it's sort of mirror image then flip it the other way next we're going to go over to sensors and um, this one needs a little bit more information it might sound a little bit more difficult and technical but it's actually not really uh, again it's all information that's available on the internet so for instance we've got here SPC 900 which is uh, an SPC 900 webcam um, again we've given it a name now the details you have to put in for for CCD chips imaging chips is you have to put in the resolution in X and Y which for a webcam uh, especially the SPC 900 it's usually on the information anyway or you can change resolutions in um, in your software your capturing software but the native for the SPC 900 is 640 by 480 which probably sounds familiar to a lot of people now also what you've got to put in is the chip width and the chip height. Again, these are all details that are available on the internet. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a second. Uh, and we've also got to put in the pixel width in microns and the pixel height in microns. Now at this point, it might start sounding a little bit frightening. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, what we're going to do next is just have a look at the QHY8L, which is my other camera. Uh, again, all the details are put in. Now. For finding these details out on particular chips and cameras, nine times out of 10, again, if you go to the manufacturer's website and look at that particular model of camera, it will give you these details. Um, you know, any manufacturer worth his salt should be giving these details anyway. So just have a look there first. Also, again, have a look at retailers and you know just see if the if the information is there at various retailers that sell your particular camera or another way if you're struggling to find this information out is firstly find out the code number for the chip that's in your camera now that will always be available freely um, normally it's a Sony chip or a, a, a Kodak chip and they have codes like um, ICQ 4278 or something similar and say we've got a, a Sony ICQ4278. In Google, simply put ICQ4278 and right after that, data sheet. What that will do is it will take you to the manufacturer of the actual chip, which will be a Sony site, and you will find the data specifications for that particular chip. And amongst all the sort of gibberish and double dutch that hardly anybody can understand you will find those details um, it is the, just the, the technical information for the chip and it's always given in the data sheets so once we've done that we can then close this section now what I would recommend also is if ever you've done anything like this where, you, where you're adding stuff, Stellarium has an habit of, of not quite remembering everything that you've done. So just make a habit of going to main and then clicking on save settings and then click close. That will then save any settings that you've actually put in there. You know, the worst thing in the world is that you've gone through these data sheets and translated the double dutch and found all the details and the next time you start to lure up, it's all gone. Um, so obviously if you do a save settings, it's, it's saved it for you. So now we've got this control panel on the top right of, of Stellarium. The, the top right one, the little spanner, is really easy. That's simply the configuration. So if you want to add an eyepiece or a, a CCD or a telescope, then you know that's just the one to click for that. We've also got these three extra little icons now, and that's what we're going to show you next. Let's just say um, that you're, you're looking at an object, uh, or you want to look at an object, you sort of might be sat in your living room even, and you're playing with Stellarium. And let's just have a say that we, we want to have a look at the double cluster. It's going to cl get clear tonight, and we want to have a look at the double cluster. So let's just zoom into the double cluster firstly, like so. Next, what we can do is we can press Alt and O, which I can configure an, an, uh, an ocular there, which, uh, eyepiece, and I can tell it that I'll be using a, a Nagler 8mm, like so. Click on that, which is the telescope ver view version, and it will show me now, as you can see, it gives the information in the top. Now, while that's pressed, 
again we can click on alt and o and now we can select the telescope say we're using uh my 200p i can see what the view would look like in that will it fit in my field of view if it will then yeah that's the scope i'm going to use tonight and that's the eyepiece i'm going to use tonight um, so it just it, it helps you with that it helps you a little bit with your pre-planning uh, because you know sort of it gives you a good idea of your field of view that you've got with a particular scope and eyepiece combination um, so that's the first one over with now the next one if we just come back out of that again is the most useful one to me to be honest is this one which is the sensor frame size and that is your CCDs that you put in earlier. Now what you can do is you can find an object. Let's just say for instance tonight we're planning on doing um, boards. The, the two galaxies M81 M82. So let's just bring boards up. Like so. Now this is a webcam view. So obviously it's very very tiny. It's a very small chip in a webcam. And we might just be able to fit most of sort of that one in. Uh, but we've got a good chance of fitting that one in so yeah we'll go for that one tonight um, or it could be that if we press alt and o and we want to change the ccd then we can go to select ccd and we're using the qhy 8 l now obviously that's zoomed out again because the chip size is a lot bigger and it will show you your apparent field of view within that chip what it does is it will help you to actually frame your image and plan. Um, now, you know, it, it might sound sort of a little bit trivial that, but if you have a look at, um, you know, you might have a photograph in a book of the Bold's Nebulas and, and you think to yourself that there's a really nice coloured star just off to the left there. Uh, I'd like to have that in my image. And, you know, if I can sort of just turn things around a little bit, maybe I can fit it in. Um, and again you can you can actually sort of rotate this as well if we press alt and o again uh, you can see that we can rotate that ccd now through sort of minus 45 degrees and again you can sort of move things around and and find the nicest framing for your for your actual picture a lot of people neglect that they think that you know you've just got your subject in and that's it grab it and with a little bit of planning it can make a great picture into a superb picture um, so like i said we can rotate that around and then you simply just rotate your scope in the in the rings uh, or rotate your camera just to, to frame up nicely so it is a really handy little little tool that um, if you've got a couple of telescopes again you can alt and o and you can change your telescope to uh, a different one you know at the moment we've got the 200p maybe i want the ed80 in which gives me a slightly wider field of view and again i can sort of frame it up uh, I can alt and o again and I can rotate um, let's just rotate it back again like so uh, so it is it's just a really handy, handy and useful tool for, for sort of finding your way around but it doesn't stop there um, let's now turn that one off and zoom out again and let's say that you've got a telrad finder on your telescope and you know you've got your book there or your chart and it says you know you if you if you tell right onto this star and move over sort of you know two circles or one and a half circles then you can do that as well so let's just say that we're over over this area and we can see that Murfak the the star is here um, and we've got our book and it shows this particular group of stars, this constellation, and we can see that the double cluster's there and the book tells us sort of how many Telrad uh, views it is across. Then just click on the little picture of a Telrad and now we've got a Telrad view. So it, it helps us with that as well. But not only that, what you can then do is, let's just say we've got our Telrad here and i'm a little bit lost now I'm, I'm wondering you know what i should be seeing through me through me my eyepiece in my telescope okay so click on on the star that's in the middle of your telrad at that point and then click on the eyepiece view and you can look through your eyepiece and compare it to your chart and you can think oh well yeah i can see those two stars there so i'm definitely on on the right route there um so let's have a look zoom back out again put my telrad view back in again and I just need to go over that way a little bit. Move your telescope the same. So it just helps you with all that. It's it's just a really good planning tool. And that's how I hit really for, for the Oculus plugin. Uh, like I said, it's just it's very underused and yet it's very, very useful uh, little tool to have. 
um, both for planning and in actual use if you've got your laptop outside there with uh, with your camera or your or your eyepieces and everything. And that's it for this one. Uh, like I said, just a quick, simple one really. And once again, thanks for watching.